Thomas Baldrick here at ASCO 2015 on Oncology TV. Happy to be joined now by Dr. Martin Voss from Memorial Sloan Kettering. Thank you, sir, for taking a few minutes out of your ASCO conference. My pleasure. Thanks, Thomas. So let's talk about the uh, the DART study. Phase two, two parts. Give us a, a background on this, would you? Sure. Pleasure. Um, so this is a trial that uh, we originally set up quite some time ago and that has gone through its first part and is presently um, enrolling patient on part two, so I'll tell you a little bit about both. Uh, the background to all this is that, as you know, we have uh, several agents that are FDA approved for the treatment of advanced kidney cancer using anti-angiogenic approaches. We know that key for the disease biology in kidney cancer um, is functional loss of VHL and a pro-angiogenic uh, signal, and that's been exploited really by most of the standard agents that we have. For second-line therapy, one of the key drugs that is approved for kidney cancer is axitinib, which is a, a pretty target-specific VEGFR2 TKI that if you look at the phase three data um, on the AXIS trial, if you look at TKI pretreated patients in the second line, it's pr produced a response rate in the range of about 11% and a median PFS of somewhere short of five months. So certainly something to be um, improved upon. Um, we are now on this trial, the DART study, combining exitinib at standard dose with a novel medication called Delantercept. Delantercept is a medication that's administered subcutaneously every three weeks, and it's a, um, an inhibitor of ALK1 signaling. Um, the activin-like receptor kinase 1 pathway is a um, pathway that is also of critical importance to angiogenesis, but it's important for a later stage of blood vessel maturation. So VEGF, which we always talk about, is important for blood vessel induction early on. ALK1 is important for maturation, so the new blood vessels um, have to be maintained, stabilized, and uh, that part we're interfering with with, uh, with the lantercept. So the um, biologic rationale here is to, to do a better job at anti-angiogenic therapy by blocking angiogenesis, which we know is key for kidney cancer biology from two different angles. And there are preclinical models that have shown that we do so more effectively, at least in vivo, um, if we combine these two approaches versus just doing one of them alone. The DART study has completed its first part, which was a dose-finding trial that we conducted and presented at GeoASCO this year. Um, and we enrolled patients uh, that had been pretreated with at least one prior VEGF TKI, but um, uh, up to three prior lines of therapy on part one. Uh, and essentially we found two things. So for one, we found that the combination is um, uh, well tolerated by patients. Um, we had already known from the single agent phase one data for Delantercept that it has non-overlapping toxicities with VEGF TKI, and that's very important. If we combine two drugs that had the same toxicity profile, we'd see a lot more of that toxicity. So Delantercept does not cause hypertension on its own, it does not cause proteinuria, it does not cause hand-foot syndrome. Um, on the phase one for Delantercept alone, we had seen fluid retention events and anemia as sort of the signal toxicity that were dose defining. Um, and on the combination, we actually um, saw that that held out. So the rates of TKI specific uh, toxicities were what one might anticipate with exitinib alone. And we did see the um, toxicity signal that we had known for Delantercept uh, from its single agent phase one study, and it was not exacerbated by the combination. So that was the key observation on part one is that we could combine the two safely at relevant dose levels uh, tolerable to patients. And that's actually been a challenge for kidney cancer studies. We've done so many trials with different combinations that have always been hindered by the toxicity profiles we saw. So DART in that way certainly stands out. Efficacy signal on part one uh, was promising. If we look at the part one data that we presented previously, then we uh, reported an overall response rate across the different dose levels we tested of 25%. Uh, and we saw a median PFS of over eight months. So if you put that into context with what I just told you about standard agents and pretreated patients, it's certainly something uh, that is um, of interest. It has to be put into perspective because it's a small cohort of patients, you know, we treated um, uh, you know, less than 30 patients on the part one of the study, but it prompted phase two, which is what we're undertaking right now. Part two opened several months ago, and at this point uh, is open at uh, um, about 40 centers throughout the United States. 
uh, and uh, is well into its accrual. Um, this is now a randomized study. So we are now looking at patients who have had one and only one VEGF-directed therapy. Uh, they can have had an mTOR inhibitor, they can have had immunotherapy, but not more than one um, VEGF-directed agent. And they are randomized to receive axitinib plus delandercept at the dose level that we found most um, tolerable during part one um, versus exitinib plus placebo. The benefit to patients is that everyone who goes on the trial, although it's a randomized trial, gets the standard agent at full dose. Patients can be dose escalated uh, on their exitinib as per label or per standard practice. Um, and there's a 50-50% chance that patients are randomized to the investigational combination. Very good. So when you get phase two or part two results, come back and see us, would you? Absolutely. It would be my pleasure. Thanks, Dr. Voss. Appreciate Absolutely. your time. Yeah, thank you.